convocation of the OP Jindal Global University has been called to confer the degrees upon the candidates who in the examination held for the purpose have been certified to be worthy of the same. Uh, I now declare the convocation open. Congratulations, the graduating class of 2019. Good evening to all of you. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the graduating students, their parents, of course the faculty members of our various schools of JGU, and indeed all other invitees, members of the governing body, the board of the general family. It is indeed our proud privilege to be able to celebrate this 8th convocation of OP Jindal Global University at our 10th anniversary. This year in particular is very special for us as we celebrate our 10th anniversary. Marking the 89th birth anniversary of Sri OP Jindal in whose memory this university was founded and we are indeed recognizing this by celebrating this day as our Founders' Day. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guests on the dais. Let me begin with Professor David Wilkins, Professor at Harvard Law School, Vice Dean of the Harvard Law School, and also Director of the Center for Global Legal Profession. David is a very special person because of the fact that he has been a longtime supporter and somebody who inspired me deeply in contributing to this effort. But most importantly, David was in Sonipat on 7th August 2009, long before faculty, students, staff of JGU landed up there. He had the vision and the farsightedness to be present here before anybody could, and we made him believe that there will be a campus that will come into existence in the next several weeks, and classes will begin there. He trusted us and joined us in the journey which continues till day. Thank you, David, for accepting our invitation and to be here today. Let me also extend a warm welcome to another very strong supporter of our university, Ms. Zareen Daruwala, the Chief Executive Officer of Standard Chartered Bank. Zareen has been, again, a very strong supporter for a number of reasons, but most importantly, she has believed in the vision of this university and contributed to its growth and development. Despite her busy schedule, she accepted our invitation, and I am grateful to her for our presence. Thank you, Zareen. Let me make this special moment to welcome our Honorable Chancellor, the founding benefactor of OP Jindal Global University, Mr. Naveen Jindal. So many things have said about him. Let me say that this man had an extraordinary vision, a vision to build a university that will hopefully transform generations of learning in this country and beyond. I had the privilege to meet Mr. Jindal on 30th October 2006, and since then, my life has never been the same. Mr. Jindal had the far-sighted vision to create an institution that will give education to Indians and others from different parts of the world, but also he made that commitment keeping in mind the larger context of institution building. He not only provided the financial resources to build a university, but he made an important commitment towards ensuring academic freedom, autonomy, and independence, and to ensure that in a not-for-profit manner. At a time when companies and corporations, and indeed those who have made wealth, their own ability to contribute to society has been challenged. Mr. Jindal remains a shining beacon of example for generations of business people and industrialists to emulate as he has inspired many others to contribute in this effort. I would like to take this moment to particularly thank Mr. Jindal for his vision and his imagination to build OP Jindal Global University. Let me also thank Mrs. Savitri Jindal and Ms. Shalu Jindal for their untiring support to our initiative. We simply couldn't have done, and most importantly, Mr. Jindal couldn't have done, but for their support. Thank you so much. Let me quickly say that uh, this JGU began its journey in a very modest manner with only 100 students and 10 faculty members with one school in the year 2009, and as some of you know, we have covered a very significant distance. We have covered this distance, and along the way, this year has been very special. 
because we achieved a number of important distinctions. I want to quickly recognize the fact that this year brought us into the QS world rankings of universities and broke us into the top 800 universities in the world, an unparalleled recognition for a nine and a half year old university among the 28,000 universities in the world. Not only that, we were also recognized as one of the top 150 universities among the young universities and that also made us only one of three Indian universities to be in that league. Beyond those two recognitions, the last few days augured very well for us. We may not have expected this to come right at the time when we are having our 10th anniversary convocation, but as it is, Destiny had its own plans and we were just a few days ago recommended for recognition as an institution of eminence by the University Grants Commission. <laughs> Let me quickly turn to the graduating students. What's unique about JGU and why the graduating students have greater responsibilities? Let me say that you are expected to have and indeed education that is going to make you transformative leaders. You are expected to be change agents who will take up difficult and complex tasks with a view to addressing the problems and challenges that the world is facing. You simply need not have come to Jindal if your expectation is to get a job and to do good for yourself and your own life. You are expected to help others and make the life of other people better. You are expected to improve their lives and hopefully transform their lives. This is not just a good thing to do for a Jindal graduate, but it is your responsibility as you have received privileged education. You have received privileged education because of the sacrifices of all your parents who are sitting there. And let's give a big hand to all the parents who are here. Your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts, your grandparents, many of whom are present here to celebrate your journey, it is because of their personal and professional sacrifices you have come here and you have come this far. And knowing Indian parents, they will continue to sacrifice more for you and I can only hope that you will appreciate this responsibility that the parents have done for you and this comes with huge responsibility that each one of you have. Congratulations once again to the graduates of Jindal Global Law School, Jindal Global Business School, Jindal School of International Affairs, Jindal School of Government and Public Policy and Jindal School of Liberal Arts and Humanities. I particularly thank and congratulate the deans of the schools as well as the graduating students and also the faculty members. This year is also very special for us. We are graduating the first two students of the doctoral program in the Jindal Institute of Behavioral Sciences and I would like to make a special mention to those two graduates who are receiving their doctorate degree today. I also want to recognize that the Jindal Institute of Behavioral Sciences under the leadership of Dr. Sanjeev Sani has been able to mentor and indeed engage with the students who have now found to be worthy to be giving the doctorate and congratulations to those two students. JGU is a powerful idea. The idea was based upon a vision to attract the best minds who can inspire the best set of students who are recruited and admitted from across the country and around the world. But we also are a pluralistic university, a university that is deeply committed to diversity and this diversity is reflected in everything that we do. I am happy to report that 50% of our full-time faculty members are women. 40% of women in our faculty hold leadership positions and nearly 47% of our students are women. And I'm also happy to report that over 60% of the new faculty members who have joined in this academic year happen to be women as well. These are important commitments that the university made towards promoting pluralism and diversity in everything that we do. I want to quickly say that imagine how Sonipat was just 10 years ago. You know, we used to tell people, where are we located? And we will tell them, you know, we were near a place called Biswamil. And if they didn't understand Biswamil, we might say that there is something called the Rai School of Sports and we are near that. And if they didn't get that, we will say, you know what, there is something called the Jagdishpur village 
and once you come there, you will see the university. And if some people didn't understand that, we might say, maybe you know the Ratadana village, which is very near, and we are near to the university. Well, now what people say is that everybody around Sonipat say, we are near OP Jindal Global University. That's an extraordinary journey, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you are responsible for it, and congratulations for that. If somebody said 10 years ago that people from so many countries in the world, Afghanistan, Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Bulgaria, China, Canada, Egypt, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Hong Kong, Iceland, Iran, Israel, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Nigeria, Poland, Romania, Russia, South Korea, Sweden, Syria, United Kingdom, United States of America, and Ukraine, these people will be living in Sonipat. Nobody would have believed it. And this has happened. People from all these countries have made Sonipat as their home and JGU as their home and are living and working. It is their commitment and dedication, along with the other faculty members across the 28 states of India, are made JGU what it is today. And once again, thank you for that. I would like to express my deep appreciation to the deans and vice deans and assistant and associate deans and all the faculty members and staff for their tireless contribution, their sacrifices to make JGU what it is. I would like to thank all the leadership as well as the staff members of the three institutes, JIPS, JILDI, as well as IAHED for their contributions. In conclusion, I would like to thank the graduating students. I am certain that our graduating students will carry forward the values and spirit of JGU, which includes hard work and the pursuit of excellence. Never compromise on that, and this will keep you in good stead. Determination to achieve your goals, but also help others along the way. Perseverance towards larger common goals is critical as all of you are in this together. Believe it or not, today onwards, there are 3,000 alumni of JGU, and it is important for you to stick together as you move your journey. Remain open to differences, as in this world, you are going to find a number of people whom you will disagree. I disagree while respecting people, be prepared for adversity, but always be forgiving, as that one quality of yours is going to make you a significantly empowered individual and most importantly, a likable individual. Once you make it big, be giving, be generous, be magnanimous, engage in philanthropy like our Chancellor Naveen Jindal. Above all, I want you to be good human beings who can actually understand the complexity of the world and participate in a leadership manner. Graduate of Jindal Global University means that you are inevitably expected to play a leadership role. And leadership is not just leading from the front, but participating from behind. I would like to end my speech by reflecting on a concept which I am deeply committed to, which is the concept of Ubuntu has been it's my own life story and to that of the evolution and development of JGU. And it essentially means I am what I am because of who we all are. Originating in the Bantu dialects of Africa, Ubuntu shows us an understanding of ourselves in relation with others in the world. According to Ubuntu, and I quote, there exists a common bond between us all. And it is through this bond through our interaction with fellow human beings that we discover our own human qualities. A person is a person through other person. We affirm our humanity when we acknowledge that of others. So the concept of Ubuntu is a powerfully permeating concept and I sincerely hope that the graduating students take on board that concept as you pursue your own life's journeys. In this journey, as you face the trials and tribulations of life, this concept will help you in good stead, will help you maintain the kind of confidence, but also humility that comes with achievements. So the graduating class of 2019, go ahead and make the best use of your lives. Remember the concept of Ubuntu. I must say that maybe this concept of, so, of Ubuntu is so deeply embedded in JGU because our Chancellor Naveen Jindal's pet name is 
Bantu. I don't know how many of you know about that. But being called Bantu also engages the idea of Ubuntu so deeply embedded in humanity and that is what he has reflected today. So I want to once again congratulate the class of 2019. Go ahead and make the best use of your lives by impacting positively the lives of others. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Professor David Wilkins from the Harvard Law School who has been a big support for us for more than a decade now. Let's give him a big hand for being a big support. Thank you. Ms. Zareen Daruwara, CEO, Standard Chartered Bank, who has been a big support and also been a parent of uh, JGU. Welcome, thank you for being with us. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, Dr. Rajkumar, Registrar, Mr. Murthy, Chairperson of OP Jindal Group, my mother, Srimati Savitri Jindalji, Shalu, Seema, all the distinguished guests, faculty, family members and parents of graduating students and the dearest students. I am absolutely delighted to see all of you at the 8th convocation of OP Jindal Global University. We are celebrating with great pride the 10th anniversary of establishing Jindal University this year. I want to congratulate the faculty led by Professor Rajkumar for our university to be ranked among one of the top 150 young universities in the world and especially to be recommended for institution of eminence tag by UGC. Let's give them a big hand. You would agree with me that these are extraordinary achievements for a university that's only 10 years old. Just imagine a 10 year old university, but we could do all this because of sheer dedication and commitment of all the faculty. Because it's easy to make buildings, but the real soul of these buildings, of the university, is the faculty, your teachers, your gurus, who have put their heart and soul in making Jindal University what it is today. Today, it's a very special day. It's a day of celebration, of reflection, and most importantly, of gratitude. I know you will miss hanging out near the national flag at the university. The memorable nights of Biswambil and <coughs> the yellow box. So you know, you know both me and your vice chancellor, we are very young. We know all that you are up to. One world is over and other, another is waiting to begin for all of you. It is indeed a very special day for me too, as it's my father's 89th birth anniversary. And we have created Jindal University in his memory. My father has been my inspiration and guiding light in life. He always said that education is the greatest gift that you can give to anyone. As I stand here talking about him, I am remembering him. And I miss him. I wish he was here with us today to see the incredible work that we have all done together. And to celebrate this special occasion with all of you. So it's an emotional day for you and for me. I have been thinking last few days what to say to you that would guide you and prepare you for your journey ahead. So I want to share with you something that has really helped me. It is a book. 
is a book that your vice chancellor dr rajkumar gave me about i don't know two or three years back it's a book called the one thing it's a it's a book by gary keller and j papasan it's a very small small book very easy to read but yet has very powerful concepts so i just want to share a few things from the book with all of you so the basic idea is the book starts with saying that if you chase two rabbits if you chase two rabbits you will not catch either one and i have all along my life not chased two rabbits i've chased multiple rabbits four five six rabbits at the same time so the book also says that it is important to know what is your one thing what is that one thing that's most important to you and if you don't know what your one thing is then the most important thing is to find out what it is that's for all of you so we all believe in multitasking many of us you know have it was uh, till few years back it was very fashionable also to be called a multitasker i have been called a multitasker many times but this book rightly says the multitasking is basically to mess up more than one thing at the same time perfect examples would be to wanting to talk on the phone and drive to wanting to study and at the same time be watching television which we do all the time so it says it doesn't help and i have tried to do multiple things tried to you know be run a very large industry to be in politics at the same time to be on the indian shooting team to be you know winning to be in the playing the national championships in polo and what happens i did do well i mean i did do well in shooting i did do well in politics i did do well in business but then you do not become number 1 you kind of become jack of all games so drawing inspiration from this book and my well wishers i decided to focus focus on my one thing so i decided to take a break from politics and focus solely on on business because i feel there's a lot more creative i can create so much more you know economic wealth for the country just by setting up more and more industries more and more jobs so we really have to think about this multitasking i think it's no longer even fashionable to be doing multi uh, multitasking we need to value ourselves and figure out what matters most to us and give it our undivided attention that is what is going to get us the best results so the book shows you how to do it how to build up on it so i would uh, suggest you know if anybody is interested in this idea to to look up at this book but i want to share with you that at op jindal global university the one thing for us has been you all of you have been the one thing for us and that's the students how do we give you the best experience the best education best values best professors best curriculum the best gym the best swimming pool the best beds the best mattresses the best furniture the best food can't promise you the best drinks you know in haryana we are not allowed to drink below 25 maybe that will change one day if somebody makes it is his one thing for that to happen i see that you only laugh and i can only have your attention when i talk about the yellow box or the drinks right <laughs> friends our ancient indian philosophy vedanta vedanta teaches us to follow our swadharma and not follow the pradharma swadharma is following your own nature 
doing what your inner calling is, doing what you want to do, not what somebody else asks us to do. So I really hope that your learning experiences at Jindal has helped you to identify your own aptitudes and interests, and most importantly, your one thing. I hope that can, you can pursue your labor of love throughout the rest of your life and really excel in what you do. I would like to once again congratulate the graduating students. May you enjoy whatever you do and may you succeed in life and keep sending good news to your alumni association, to your alma mater, because they would all be the most proud to hear when, when you are doing well in life. So go forward in the lights and make new opportunities. And like Raj said, not only for yourself, but for others too. I would like to congratulate the faculty members of Jindal University for empowering our students and to be the main force behind their moral integrity. Congratulations to the parents and relatives who have been waiting for this day with anticipation. And congratulations, most of all, to those of you in caps and gowns. Let's give them a big hand. Hope that all of you have realized the greater purpose of education during your years at Jindal. And we are confident that you will make us all proud with your wonderful contributions to the society. Dear students, I would request you all to please rise. All the graduating students, please rise. Now please look at your parents, wherever they are in the hall, look at your parents, your family members, your teachers, due to whose efforts and sacrifices this special day has been possible. Please give them a big hand. Come on students, you can do better. Thank you. Please be seated. Finally, I want to thank Vice Chancellor Professor Raj Kumar and our team of 450 plus faculty and staff who are the real strength of Jindal University. Dear students, please always treat the Jindal alumni tag as a special badge of honor and always keep your badge flying high. You are now our university's ambassadors. As you go out and make wonderful careers and shine in life, I am sure my father's blessings will strengthen your character and support you through rough times. May God bless you all. Jai Hind. Good evening. Uh, uh, um. Dr. David Wilkins, uh, Mr. Naveen Jindal, the entire Jindal family, uh, Professor Rajkumar, and Mr. Murthy. It's indeed a pleasure uh, for me to visit a top tier institute. And um, as Mr. Rajkumar mentioned, my daughter graduated two years back from this university. So my association with this university is more special than in many other ways. Uh, I'm sure many of you under this roof will grow up to contribute to the society and the economy at large and become leaders of tomorrow. I would like to congratulate all of you, the students, the stars of the evening, who have accomplished an important milestone in your life, and I wish you all the best for what lies ahead. I'm sure you have mixed feelings, one of utter relief, no more exams, and the thought of graduating and beginning a new chapter in your life. College life is full of highs and lows and moments of anxiety, but I'm certain that all of you will learn a little bit, I'm sure, through your five years or three years, year, 
time management, problem solving, teamwork. To me, these are very big life lessons that will stay with you. Having studied in a prestigious issue institute like OP Jindal University that has various student exchange collaborations and global partnership, I have no doubt that all of you will do exceedingly well and will go a long way in life. I would like to take this opportunity to laud OP Jindal Global University for becoming the youngest and the only Indian university to break through in the top 1,000 universities in the QS World University rankings. I'm sure it's a commendable feat and a reflection of the collective efforts of the administration, faculty, and the students. Today may be your last official day at the university for the graduating students, but as they say, every end has a new beginning. As you embark on your new path today, I would like to share a few anecdotes of my life as well as few successful leaders with whom I worked. When I started my career, I actually uh, graduated as a chartered accountant. I graduated in an era where there was only personal computer, no internet, no ATMs, no credit cards, no cell phones, no email, and the computer that I worked on would have maybe 2.1 GB size, so if you worked on a large Excel sheet, it would hang. That is the era that I graduated in. And if you ha wanted a, a car, you had only three models to choose from. You had to wait three years for a gas cylinder, maybe two years for a telephone connection. So clearly, the era that I worked, I started my life three decades back, and when you think about the era today, I'm sure when you graduate today, the life that will be there three decades hence will be very, very different. And there comes the first lesson is about learning and unlearning. For me, somebody who had hardly any experience with technology, today as a CEO of Standard Chartered Bank, I have to determine the IT technology, the whole strategy around IT for the bank. And this is the learning that one has over the years that you have to keep relearning, you have to keep reimagining the customer of today in my kind of scenario. Today is the era of hyper-personalization where one uses data to react to a customer decision in real time. IoT will change, Internet of Things will change the way customers behave. And we're seeing a trend of smart devices, smart watches, TV speakers, and there's no end to how the financial needs will be embedded in these devices. Non-banking entrants are a big threat to banks uh, today, like Google, Apple, PayPal, who are redefining the standards for digital banking. So this is really blurring the line between traditional banking and in other industries. So clearly, it necessitates being agile, having an open mind about learning, and never saying I know it all. I, I personally don't have hesitation saying I don't understand it, please explain. And I think there's no shame in acknowledging that you don't know it all. So that's my one big lesson over the years. The second big lesson for me has been a never say die attitude. And it's not in my DNA to give up. And I actually have an aversion to the word it can't be done. I always want people who work with me to say how it can be done. I'll give an example of my own life. Um, I, when ICICI merged with ICICI Bank, I was asked by my that time CEO, Mr. Kamath, that you go and run the agribusiness of the bank. I had never, I didn't even know the A of agribusiness. And I had to start with just six, seven people. I had to build a team. I had to build a business from scratch. And that were amongst at that period of time, I actually thought, oh, what a mess I've landed up in. Is this a sidetrack for me? But if I recollect in my period, I would say that was the most memorable period of my life, my working career. I set up the first rural ATM in India. I turned around loss-making branches. In those days, in 2002-03, we disbursed loan to farmers through cards, and there were many exciting firsts. That's the other lesson for me, that the fear of change should not stop you taking on challenges. In your working careers, you will be confronted with challenges. Just take it as an opportunity, and you will find that you really excel. Uh, the other thing is about perseverance. I think perseverance overcomes resistance. 
And that's the major difference between success and failure. Just hang in there and endeavor once again. We've seen the lives of many, many successful people who've done exceedingly well. Steve Jobs is a classic example of somebody who bounced back after being thrown out of the very company that he founded. Uh, Thomas Edison, who invented the first light bulb, had to go through 10,000 prototypes before he finally perfected it. And a recent example is that of Jack Ma of Alibaba, now the richest man in China, for somebody who was born in a very poor family, guided tourists to improve his English, somebody who applied to Harvard, I'm told, 10 times and got rejected, somebody who sought employment with 30 organizations got rejected every single time. It's the perfect story of success based on self-belief and perseverance. So rejection is simply an inevitable part of the process. And Jack Ma's story just tells you, just pick yourself up. Belief in yourself is very important and persist. J.K. Rowling was another example of somebody who was turned down by 12 publishers before finding success with the Harry Potter books. So this list can go on and on. I think it's important to be able to embrace failure and pick oneself up. Again, challenges are what keeps us afresh. Uh, there's a saying which says, man thrives oddly enough in the presence of a challenging environment. I personally feel that that's really what I have enjoyed, actually, the challenges. And of course, the power of determination. Everybody knows the story of Amitabh Bachchan, again, who was rejected and then finally what a success he has been. The lesson I think for all of us is not to be disheartened by what people say, but have self-belief. Uh, I've also believed in one more mantra. Everybody who succeeds has to pass through the boulevard of hard work. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You may not be the strongest, you may not be the fastest, but you can certainly work the hardest and hard work plus dreams plus de dedication is equal to success. In fact, uh, when I um, uh, started uh, taking charge of the wholesale bank, one of my one downs walked up to me and said, ma'am, you reached a level. Why do you need to work hard? And my response to him was that this is the only thing that I know how to, how to keep improving myself. So hard work is an investment that is, has to be made and irrespective of your level in the corporate ladder, you really need to, for success, you need to keep continuing to work hard. You can never say I've arrived and I can take a back seat. To me, success is a vehicle which runs on a wheel called hard work. And the one more piece of advice is take pride in what leaves your desk. Even today, I'm shocked people write mails to me with five different fonts with five errors in the emails, which is grammatical or typo. I think it's very important to be disciplined about this. I, I got my first lesson when my first boss was a lady who went on to become the joint managing director of ICSA Bank. And I used to, in my first year, make errors in the letters that I used to draft for her. And she had an eye for error. And after that learning, I have been so very particular, and it has really helped me in what I'm today, because whatever work leaves your desk, there's to be a sense of pride and there's to be a sense of accuracy. And any boss who sort of reprimands you in your early life, my advice is take it as a great input and a great learning. My best learnings have been in the first three, four years of my life where my bosses hauled me up. And I'm today because of the fact that they really hauled me up. And of course, dream big, uh, I think, uh, you know, we've seen Mr. Rajkumar, he had a dream and he achieved it. I think life is all about success and failure, but in Mr. Ratan Tata's words, ups and downs are very important to keep us going because a straight line, even in an ECG, means we are not alive. And I think it's very important uh, to dream. I again, go back to my own example. I was like two or three years in my job. And one day I was sitting with my boss uh, and uh, I told her, I don't think I'll even reach your level. And she was a general manager and she reprimanded me saying, never say that, never aim low, aim high. And that advice has stayed with me all my life. 
I was the first female CEO of Standard Chartered in the last 160 years of Standard Chartered's presence in India. And I, I often get asked about how difficult was it to get where I am today. My experience has been there's no discrimination. And I would say that to a lot of the women here today that most organizations today have evolved for the better and you are entering the workforce at a time where gender biases are declining by the day. And we've seen not only in banking, we've seen in the information technology field also, we've had very successful CEOs. Um, there was a point where there was a Capgemini CEO who was a female, IBM, and many other, uh, Hewlett Packard, many, many female CEOs. So clearly, I think only thing I would advise for the women is that choose a life partner who supports your ambition. And before I sign off, I would like to give one last piece of advice, which is the most important. Do not compromise on your ethics and values. Ethics is a very small word, but creates a lot of complexity. Our values are what makes us. As Mahatma Gandhi said, there is enough in this world for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. Our values act as the anchors when we have to make very tough decisions and very often life is not black and white, it's always gray. And it's these value systems which will ensure that you make the right decisions. I end by wishing all of you well in the future. Remember, with great power came, comes great responsibility. If you met your goals, set some bigger goals. Once you've met your family and personal needs, move on to the goals of the society and become responsible citizens of the world. Do give back to society and make the world a better place. Thank you so much for inviting me and all the very best. I know uh, that Raj said uh, the most important part is to come, but I know uh, the best advice any commencement speaker has ever given is to be inspiring, to be thoughtful, to be eloquent, but most of all, to be brief. And so I promise you that it will not be long before you have your celebration you so richly deserve. Uh, and that's because so much has already been said by so many inspiring speakers. Uh, Raj, thank you very much for putting me on after someone who brings greetings from the Dalai Lama. I bring greetings from Harvard Law School. It's not quite the same. In fact, uh, from now on, after attending this wonderful celebration, I'm just going to start calling Harvard the Jindal Law School, the Jindal Global University of the West. <laughs> so I'm only going, I'm not going to actually read all these beautiful words that I wrote. Instead, I'm going to make a few points uh, that haven't been made yet, or at least haven't been made, I think, in quite as much importance as they deserve. The first is, again, to thank all the people who made this possible, but I want to start with the grandparents, starting with the widow of Mr. Opie Jindal, who is the one who, after all, without whose vision this would not have happened. Mrs. Jindal, I just want to thank you for everything that you have done to make this day possible. And for the inspiration that you also so obviously gave your son, Naveen. And I bet that the lesson that he imparted in his remarks came as much from you as it did from his father, which is the lesson of not being distracted by too many things, by too many goals, by too much ambition. Naveen is right. There is no such thing as multitasking. In fact, I tell my students, and I offer to you, that the single hardest thing in your lives will be to learn how to be fully present at any moment.
because there are so many distractions coming at you through your phone, through the internet. Pretty soon we'll be, it'll be coming through your glasses or through the implants that uh, Google and Facebook will be putting into our brains. It will be so hard to focus and be present on a single thing. And yet, if you ask anyone, or if you think in your own life, what has mattered the most to you, it's that for someone else, you were fully present, that they were fully present for you. And that, that I want to say, is the greatest gift that Naveen and his family have given to this university. They didn't just give an incredible gift of philanthropy, but look where he sits today. Look for where his wife and his sister and his mother sit today. They are present in this university in a meaningful and deep way that conveys the value of importance far more than any, even the greatest financial contribution could. So Naveen, thank you for your presence. Of course, the financial contribution didn't hurt. Raj wants me to emphasize that point. But although there is no such thing as multitasking, there is such a thing, a very important thing, as integrating multiple sources of knowledge and ideas. And that is at the very heart of Jindal Global University. It is a multidisciplinary institution and one that no matter how much the Jindals have loved it, they have allowed to flourish on its own. And I think that, Naveen, you learned from Shalu and from her beauty and understanding of the arts and of creating an art form that is itself a multidisciplinary art form. And in that honor, I want to thank you for doing what has been the most important thing to let this university thrive. And I'll quote the words of a person who himself is a multidisciplinary artist, the artist Sting, who many of you know started out his life as an English professor, which is why his words are so beautiful. And he puts together classical music and rock and roll and jazz, much in the way you do in your beautiful dance. And he said, if you love someone or something, set them free. And that's what you've done for this university. You set it free to achieve its true course. And that, my dear students, is what you are now. You are now free. You are now free to pursue your own dreams. You are free to make your own way in this world. And that's both exciting and scary. Because now you can't blame your parents anymore for all the things that you think they made you do. Now you have to take responsibility for your own decisions. And that responsibility has never been more important than it is now. Because India needs you more than ever. This law school and this university was created at a very opportune moment in history. Since 1991, as India has opened itself to the world, it has let the world in in a way that requires thoughtful leadership. It requires ingenuity and creativity, and it requires deep learning. 
That was the vision that inspired Raj Kumar to want to create a world-class university here in India. And although he thanks me and he thanks Naveen and many others for making that dream possible, the fact of the matter is there would be no Jindal University without Raj Kumar. In fact, as Naveen said last night at a wonderful dinner that he held for some students and faculty, uh, he didn't choose Raj, Raj chose him. And that's the same for all of us. But of course, Raj would have never been able to do what he'd done if Pratiba had not chosen him. And so please thank his amazing wife, a brilliant lawyer in her own right, Pratiba Jane, for choosing Raj and to be honest, putting up with Raj, which allows all of us to have the benefit of Raj. Yes, Jindal came along at a very opportune time and India needs all of its graduates. But it's not just India, because the world needs India and therefore the world needs the graduates of the Jindal Global University. I've had the great pleasure of being in this country many times over the last several years, working on a, a book about the Indian legal profession in the age of globalization. It's a mere 972 pages. I urge you to read it before you go home this evening. But I had the pleasure of working on that book uh, with someone who his parents are born here in India. He himself grew up in Australia and in the United States, but has spent a lot of time here. His name is Vikram Aditya Khanna. Some of you may know him. He's a brilliant professor at the University of Michigan Law School. And he makes the point about India I want to emphasize here today. That India is important to the world because India has four things, four opportunities but four challenges that also face the rest of the world. He calls them the four D's. The first is development. India has developed remarkably over the last 20 or 30 years, but it faces all the challenges of development, particularly how do we close the gap between societies haves and have-nots? How do we ensure that development benefits everyone and not just a few? Second, India is achieving this by being the world's largest democracy. This point cannot be understated. If you look at the two biggest developing economies of the world, India and China, it's clear that they are making opposite bets on how to develop. China is betting you can have capitalism without democracy. The economics and business graduate students and the liberal arts students know that we used to think that was impossible. And yet, we have seen China develop very rapidly. But I also think we are seeing the strains of that choice that China is making as anybody who has been watching the news coming out of Hong Kong over the last few days can attest. India, on the other hand, is betting that you can have capitalism with the most insane democracy the world has ever seen. The most intense, the most robust, the most vocal, uh, I watch your television, I watch your election campaigns. It is an incredible sight. And yet, I put my money on India. Because I believe at the end of the day, no matter how hard and how messy, as the great Winston Churchill once said, democracy is the worst system in the world except for all the others. So I put my money on India as a democracy. 
The third, and part of the reason why India's democracy is so challenging, is its diversity. This is the most diverse society I have ever been a part of or ever seen. I always like to say that the, you could tell the diversity of India because the one rupee note is translated, I think, into all 22 official languages of India. How many unofficial languages? How many cultures? How many religions? How many regions? How many ethnic groups? And yet it's that very diversity that both strains the bonds of community and creates the power of India as a community. And finally, and this is especially for the grad graduates here today, are demographics. India is one of the youngest countries in the world. 50% of India's population are under the age of 25, which is, includes almost all of the graduates in this room. India, for many years, is going to have one of the youngest populations of the world. That's both an opportunity in terms of a dynamic workforce, but it's also a challenge as we have to bridge the generational divide. So, my friend Anand Mahindra, who I was pleased to go to college with, he was really the first person from India who I ever got to know well. He gave a, a, a talk recently at Davos in which he said, if India wins, the world wins. And I think that is so true. Because if India can bridge the challenges and reap the promise of the four Ds, then maybe there's hope in my country where divisions are tearing it apart, where democracy is in shambles, where the gap between the rich and the poor is escalating, and where the generational divide has never been greater. So you have much to teach the rest of the world. But in order to do that, you must view this not as the end of your education, but as the beginning. In my country, we call this celebration commencement. And I never understood that, because I was so happy to graduate and be done with exams and through a school that I thought, no, this is not the beginning, it's the end. But as all the people your adults, the teachers, your parents will tell you, no, school is the easy part. The hard part is learning how to live in the real world. And that requires that you view education as a lifelong preoccupation and passion. The great Mahatma Gandhi once said, live as if you will die tomorrow, but learn as if you will live, for, uh, live forever. Now, I take it those yellow parties were a little bit about living as if you will die tomorrow. Okay, that was good. But now the part is learn as if you will live forever, which means read, think, talk, Keep your mind open, keep your heart open, keep the spirit of OP Jindal Global University with you at all times. Because, as the great Mahatma Gandhi also said, the future is comprised of the actions we take today, or as Barack Obama, who I've been privileged to know since he was a student your age, said when he was running for president, we are the change we've been waiting for. So that is your charge, class of 2019 of OP Jindal University. Your charge 
is to be the change you've been waiting for. For to leave you with one last quote, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And so I charge you with inventing the future that will make you, this university, your parents, and most of all, your grandparents proud, as I'm proud to be here with you today. Thank you very much.